Hello everyone and welcome to the Flood Channel. I'm your host, Sue Levitt. Well, it has been an especially active monsoon season this year with Las Vegas receiving record amounts of rain. Thanks to the many storm systems in place, when it does rain, most water gets safely diverted away from homes and businesses. Rainwater leaves the valley through miles of underground flood channels that lie right underneath our city. And when these channels fill up, it can be especially dangerous to some homeless individuals in our community that have made the flood channels their home. We begin this program with a look into Shine a Light, an organization filled with volunteers who regularly venture into the depths of the flood channels to extend help and warn people of how dangerous the channels can be when it rains. It's quiet, it's lonely, it's dark, it's wet, it's damp. Paul Votrino spent almost three years of his life here underground in these flood channels. I had resigned to the fact that I would die homeless living in a flood drain. And living in a flood drain that's meant for flood water doesn't create the most stable living conditions. When it rains, I lose my bed. I lose, I just, it's gone and, and I have to start over. About eight years ago, Paul was arrested and received help through a Henderson drug court. He's been able to get his life back on track and is now the executive director of the Shine a Light Foundation. He returns to the tunnels where he once lived to help others find a way out. Well, these flood channels were created to keep the public safe, right? But that some people have made this their home. So obviously, when it does rain, even when it's not raining, there's a lot of dangers to living the, to living like this. You know, disease and just the addiction and the things that are going on down here. Um, but for a lot of them, they don't they don't see a way out. So it's our responsibility to hold their hand and show them a way. Shine a Light is a Freedom House sober living program that helps the hundreds of men, women, and children who live in the underground flood channels of Las Vegas. The program prides itself on going into the depths of the storm drain system to engage with the underserved hidden population on a personal level. Volunteers from Shine a Light venture into the flood channels every Saturday to offer supplies along with information on gaining access to treatment and housing. And each time it rains, efforts are increased to be sure those living in these channels realize the danger headed their way. And those experiences are like, you know, you don't gamble with that experience. So every time the rain, the water shows the level of anxiety, the level of immediacy, like it's moved now, we gotta go. There are over 677 miles of storm drains and flood channels built underneath and throughout Clark County designed to divert and carry flood water safely through the valley. When it rains, the flood channels fill up quickly, and for those living in these channels, flood water poses a serious threat. I've been stuck down there twice in the middle of flood water, you know, to my knees if not higher. Um, one time I didn't make it out, I stayed in the tunnel hanging off of a steel ladder that was built into the concrete on the side for hours waiting for the water to slow down. Paul was lucky the water did slow down and he was able to reach safety. Unfortunately, almost every monsoon season, someone dies by drowning in one of the flood channels during a storm. So it can come completely unexpected. Um, and then two, it's never, it's never easy to gauge how long it would take. So like there's been times when it rained and it never dangerously flooded, right? Like you just, you're good, you're safe, you can stay down there, take your time, pack your stuff. Then there's times when it rains and in 30 seconds, it's at your knees rushing 30 miles an hour downhill because they're designed to move downhill and it can sweep you off your feet and carry you, you know, miles down the tunnel. Shine a Light watches the weather and receives updates from the National Weather Service. This way, they can warn and give those living deep in the flood channels plenty of notice to get out. It's terrifying. The part of a tunnel that I lived in turned, so I was literally like probably about 40 feet away from the bend, right? And I'm, I'm just doing my thing, existing in my space, and I notice the water come around the corner, and it's, you know, no higher than the sole of my shoe, no big deal, and I'm like, okay, it's time to go, and so I start grabbing some stuff, and then all of a sudden I hear this 
this deafening roar kind of echoing down the tunnel and it, it took over all sound. And when you're underground, you can hear the cars, you can hear the sewers, you can hear what's happening above you. It stole all that sound and it was just replaced by this roar. And I look up and I see the water was coming around the corner. It's, it's catastrophic, right? Like, and, and that happened, you know, the, the sole of my shoe is getting wet to like, here's this gallons and gallons of water coming around the corner within minutes. It, it didn't take long at all for that rise. Hearing firsthand the terror those face living in the tunnels is what keeps organizations like Shine a Light heading back time and time again to help. It's estimated that over 2,000 people have made the tunnels their home, and so far this year, Shine a Light has helped almost 250 people get out. If you would like to help or want more information, you can visit shinealightlv.com. Well, do you know which way water flows in the Las Vegas Valley? And do you know how much rain Las Vegas receives on an average year? We'll have the answers when we come back. I hear there are new swimming pool restrictions. Am I gonna to have to get rid of my pool? There are no plans right now to prohibit anybody's existing swimming pool from continuing to have water in it so that homeowners and property owners can continue to enjoy it. What we have done, however, is we have limited the size of swimming pools going forward. This means new construction of swimming pools have to be uh, smaller than 600 square feet. Now the average size swimming pool in Southern Nevada is about 470 square feet. So a 600 square foot swimming pool still provides for a good size pool. Let's go, come on! Don't you do it. It's just a little water in the road. Welcome back. Before the break, we asked if you know which way water flows in the Las Vegas Valley and if you know how much rain we receive each year. And the answer is water flows west to east and we receive on average just over four inches of rain each year. Well, monsoon season is July through September and this season has been one of the most restless and wettest in 10 years. We take a look at some of the storms that caused heavy rain to pour into casinos and flood some area streets. Las Vegas has captured national attention this summer as monsoon season delivers some of the heaviest rainfall in 10 years. August 11th, the Las Vegas Valley was hit with fresh flash floods just two weeks after casinos and hotels were flooded with water during torrential rainfall. Video was shared all over social media showing rainwater pouring from ceilings at the Planet Hollywood and Caesars Palace Resorts on the Las Vegas Strip. Rainwater also swamped the carpet at the Circa Resort and Casino after rain started seeping in through the sportsbook video wall. Rushing water turned a parking garage on the Strip into a fast-moving river, and this video captured by a North Las Vegas police officer shows one woman swept away for nearly two miles before she grabbed onto a bridge pier and was then rescued from a flood channel. There have been three reported deaths of people who have died in flood control facilities. So this season has been one of the wettest uh, in the past 10 years. You have to go back to 2012 to find a wetter monsoon season in the Las Vegas Valley. So it's definitely wet. Um, furthermore, the past few monsoon seasons, 2019 and 2020 especially, were very dry. I think 2020 was the driest monsoon season on record for the whole southwestern United States. So it was very dry, so it seems even more dramatic because we're coming off of so many dry summer seasons. You'll see from this graph provided by the National Weather Service, the last storm on August 11th picked up a little over a half an inch of rainfall with the downpour, which brings this monsoon season official rainfall 
rainfall total to just over one inch of rain. We have not received more than one inch of rainfall during monsoon season at the official gauge since 2014. It's been really active around here and what's kind of unusual about this monsoon is that normally living in Las Vegas we're on the edge of the monsoon. You hear about it in Arizona every day but uh, out here it's usually much more bursts and breaks through the summer but it's just been burst all summer long. Almost every day we've had storm activity in the area, so that's made this season really exceptional. More video shared during the August 11th storm shows a bus trying to make its way through an intersection on Charleston Boulevard with one of the bus riders describing Charleston as raging rapids. Another video shows a car battling strong currents of downhill flooding. During these storms, the Regional Flood Control District and the National Weather Service urges everyone to please take all flash flood warnings serious. All through the season, all through the summer season, you know, don't let the sunny skies in the morning and the early afternoon fool you. These storms can develop very quickly and when they do, the flash flood threat is very real. The National Weather Service has issued over 200 flash flood warnings this summer and expects more warnings before monsoon season ends. You can't tell how deep that water is, especially if it's um, you know, flowing water. It has momentum, it can lift your car and sweep you away. If it's nighttime, it's hard to tell how deep that water might be. Uh, and then you don't know what's in that water. There's all kinds of toxins and, and snakes and, and, and kind of things like that in there. So you definitely want to avoid the flood water at all costs and take flood safety seriously. The Flood Control District does take flood safety seriously, and this is why they hold an annual press conference at the start of every monsoon season to warn residents to be prepared and use caution during flash floods. The Clark County Regional Flood Control District wants everyone to be aware of the dangers of flash flooding. This is why the district kicks off monsoon season with an annual press conference to remind residents that trails, roads, and washes can fill with water within minutes during flash flood season. Flash flood season runs from July to September, and during these months, it's especially important for Southern Nevada residents to be prepared for possible flooding and we really have no idea. We know the conditions are there, but we don't know where they're gonna form or when. And so these storms can pop up at any time, which makes them all the more dangerous because it can catch people off guard. On July 8, 1999, a flash flood took over much of the valley. The National Weather Service reports that 3.2 inches of rain poured down in about 90 minutes in parts of the valley. The city's infrastructure at the time was not equipped for the water. The district has done a lot of work since the 100-year event that hit our city back in 1999. Over $2 billion has been invested over the last three and a half decades to build 677 miles of flood channels and storm drains, along with 104 detention basins throughout the valley. We have another 25% to do. That's 38 detention basins and over 200 miles of channels and storm drains that, that still need to be built. One of the latest flood control basins to be built and the sixth project for North Las Vegas will help protect residents in the rapidly growing area. A detention basin just behind me right here. This project alone, crews hauled off 38,000 truckloads of dirt. That's more dirt than was excavated when the Allegiant Stadium was built. And when it rains, this detention basin will hold over 100 million gallons of water that could have just ran through everybody's neighborhoods and been on its way had the flood control district not prepared for this. While seven out of the last eight monsoon seasons in the Las Vegas Valley have been drier than normal, the National Weather Service advises this should not lead to a false sense of security and residents should continue to be aware of flood risks. A few ways you can stay safe this summer. Always check the forecast when planning your day. Know what to do if a flash flood warning is issued and never drive through flooded roadways. It only takes as little as six inches of flowing water to knock you off your feet. As little as a foot of water can float a vehicle. If you encounter floodwaters on your route home, turn around and find another road and educate your children about the dangers of flood channels that can quickly turn into raging rivers. Thanks to the hard work of Clark County Flood Control and extensive city planning, the risk of flooding in the Clark County vicinity and Las Vegas is significantly less than it once was, and images of submerged city streets and swift water rescues have become less common. 
The more aware the community is about these dangers, the better equipped that they will be to deal with the challenges that Mother Nature throws at us during flash flood season. Take flood safety seriously and know what to do if you encounter floodwaters. Your life just may depend on it. And as we say in the National Weather Service, turn around, don't drown. Well, it seems basic to be reminded to turn around, don't drown, but almost every flash flood season, someone tries to drive through floodwaters, so it's always good to play it safe and turn around. Well, the Flood Control District has many detention basins throughout the valley that are designed to reduce flooding by capturing water during storms. An area of town that experienced quite a bit of flooding this monsoon season will now have a brand new detention basin to help divert flood water when more big storms occur. Construction of a new flood control detention basin is underway in the fast-growing southwest area of the valley. When complete, the 294-acre-foot basin will help alleviate flooding in the southwest area of town, an area that just recently experienced heavy rainfall after a storm on July 25th. This storm flooded several streets and roadways, impacting traffic throughout the area, prompting Clark County Public Works to close West Silverado Boulevard from Dean Martin Drive to Decatur Boulevard. The Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department reported that multiple vehicles became stuck when motorists attempted to drive through the flooded roadways. Metro Police and the Clark County Fire Department assisted several motorists during the storm event near Rainbow Boulevard and Blue Diamond Road. So we never know exactly where we're going to get rain. So therefore, most of our facilities are drained to, uh, are designed for the worst case scenario. Um, and so that it protects existing development and also accommodates future development. This project includes the completion of a storm drain system that will carry water safely from the Duck Creek Railroad Detention Basin to the new Silverado Ranch Detention Basin. The outlet to this new detention basin will be connected to an existing storm drain system downstream of I-15. Once the project is complete, the chances of severe street flooding like we experienced in July will be greatly reduced. Instead, storm water will be diverted safely underground and away from street surfaces. Typically when it rains in the valley, you know, it's going to come fast and it's going to come short. And then so we have these detention basins designed to exactly take in all of that flow and contain it in that and then slowly drain it out into our outfall facility. This monsoon season has been especially intense and has delivered enough rain to the valley to make 2022 Las Vegas's wettest monsoon season in 10 years. Some areas in the southwest received just under an inch of rain in under an hour. The intense rainfall followed by flooding indicates where better flood control infrastructure is needed in the valley. The Silverado Ranch Detention Basin, along with the Blue Diamond Railroad Channel, which is currently under design, will both greatly benefit the southwest area by significantly reducing the chance of flooding. An acre is approximately a football field. So if you think about a football field stacked 293 up high, that is the capacity of this detention basin. Um, the inflow structure is taking about uh, 600 CFS. When I say, when you're thinking about a CFS, it's about a, a one basketball size. So imagine 600 uh, of those basketball coming down in here and discharging into the detention basin. Construction started on the Silverado Ranch Detention Basin and Outfall Facilities in August of 2021. The project should be complete November 2022. It includes uh, four main structures. Um, the first one starting from the west, Decatur Inflow Structure, which will take flow from um, north of Decatur and then bring it down south along Decatur and into the um, detention basin. We are going to connect to an existing facility west of Decatur, which is a 16 by 6 RCA or reinforced concrete pipe. And from the south, we also have an inflow, south inflow structure um, starting off uh, around the Pyle and Decatur area, heading north along Ulam and discharging east to the detention basin. The Flood Control District has completed over 75% of their Flood Control Master Plan with just over $2.1 billion in work done since 1986. 
When the Silverado Detention Basin is complete, there will be 105 detention basins and 677 miles of flood channels completed across Clark County. Seeing the project built, that is the most rewarding part of my job. I, I, I like the design, I get to do my um, blue pencil, take out my blue pencil and review the design. But once I am out here, I wave to the guys and the gals, go to meetings, you know, tell them what we need as far as flood control facilities, what's important to us. Um, and then just seeing the, the project built, that is the most rewarding part of my job and I love it. With the completion of the Silverado Detention Basin, as mentioned, our valley will have a total of 105 detention basins. And there's also miles of flood channels that lead into these basins. But do you know how many miles? We'll have the answer when we return. There's a place to share gossip about the office party fun and a place to share the story you tell everyone. There's a place to share a laugh about when things went wrong and a place to share the video of you dancing to your song. There's a place to share spare change, lunch, and your time. But we could all be better at sharing how we're feeling inside. 76% of employees have struggled with at least one issue that affected their mental health. When you share, you're not alone. Why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? Welcome back to the Flood Channel. Before the break, we asked if you know how many miles the flood channels run through the valley, and the answer is there are 677 miles of storm channels and drains throughout Clark County. Well, a new exhibit at the Discovery Children's Museum is helping teach and warn children about the danger of flash flooding. Kids can now visit Dranger Danger, who not only gives kids important tips, but also grants a few wishes. I'd love to meet you, but you don't want to meet me. Flood safety reminders are important for everyone, but especially children who may not fully understand that playing in flood water can be dangerous. This is why Dranger Danger is now here at the Discovery Children's Museum giving kids important tips. For us, it was really a no-brainer, right? We love education, obviously. It's in everything that we do here. But then really being able to bleed in and bring some of our local government agencies that are actively doing this work in the community, we just thought this was so important. Dranger Danger is an interactive Zoltar, so the kids have a fun time listening to his safety tips. And Dranger not only gives out tips, but also fortunes, making the interaction that much more fun for the children. It's a little skeleton guy with swimming gear, and like, I love swimming. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's so hilarious. And then it's so cool, you get these little tips and tricks to help you out with, you know, flood safety, so I think that's pretty awesome. Growing up in Las Vegas, I saw lots of floods and I felt like it was a really important thing. I still do to educate kids about that because it, it can be really dangerous and it might seem enticing, but it's, it's really dangerous and it maybe doesn't look that way, but um, it is something to be aware of. We want to remind children and teens to stay out of storm drains as well as staying out of the gutters when it's raining because you just never know how fast that water's gonna be moving. It can go up to speeds of 30 miles an hour. So Dranger here is really reinforcing that message to stay out of the storm drain, stay safe during a rainstorm. Safety tips are printed on tickets, which the kids can keep and take with them when they leave the museum as a reminder to stay safe. And if they're lucky, they'll also take away a prize. When kids push the button, and they get their fortune, they need to really check it out because they may win a prize. And that prize is filled with all kinds of regional flood control district swag. I'm the danger that lives in the storm drain. Dranger Danger speaks to the kids in both Spanish and English and is expected to reach over 250,000 children in the year that he's living here at the museum. It's important for them to understand that this is not just something cool that you see in a movie or when water builds up that you should be playing in it. We really want them to know that like safety is part of the education process and I think that's why this partnership is so invaluable. 
This is the first time the Clark County Regional Flood Control District has partnered with the Discovery Children's Museum. And when Dranger Danger made his debut, the museum had a full day of hands-on, fun, educational flood safety activities for the kids. I did not grow up here, so flash floods are new to me. And they're new to my daughter. She sees it raining outside and sees the big river and she wants to go out and play in it. And so we've had to have lots of talks about like, nope, that's not, not a good idea. I would tell them to come check it out. It seems like a really fun way to educate kids about um, flood safety. Take it from me, Ranger Danger. <laughs> Dranger Danger will only live at the museum for a year, so you'll want to go check it out soon. The exhibit is in the Eco City section on the second floor of the museum. Well, we want to thank you for joining us for this Flood Channel episode. If you would like updates on the efforts of the Clark County Regional Flood Control District, you can visit the website at regionalflood.org. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. We'll see you next time.